Hello and welcome to Insight of Thermology. This is Dr. Amrit welcoming you to the series on abnormal pupillary reactions. Today we are studying Wernicke's hemianopic pupil. Without any delay, let's get started. Wernicke's hemianomic pupil is also an afferent pupillary defect just like the RAPD. However, the lesion is specifically present in the optic tract. Usually, there is also an counterlateral hemianopia which presents along with this Wernicke hemianomic pupil. In my previous video on the lesions of uh, visual pathway, I already explained to you in detail what happens when there is a lesion specifically present in the optic tract which is represented here by number 5. So the patient presents with contralateral uh, incongruous homonymous hemianopia along with the Wernicke's pupil and optic atrophy. And because the optic tract is present in close relationship with the midbrain in which the third nerve is present and also the corticospinal tracts, usually the patient will also have third nerve palsy and ipsilateral hemiplegia along with the Wernicke's hemianomic pupil. Now, what are the causes uh, of this Wernicke hemianomic pupil? I mean to say, what are the lesions which can actually affect the optic tract? So, it could be tumors which are coming from the thalamus, which are present right above the midbrain. So, I, what I mean to say is the thalamus is situated right above the midbrain and over there we have the optic tract. Okay, so tumors of the thalamus along with that syphilis, tuberculosis and posterior cerebral artery aneurysms and superior cerebellar artery aneurysms. So these structures are present in close relationship to our optic tract and therefore the lesions can cause defects of the optic tract and give us what is called as the Wernicke's pupil. Optic tract is formed by the uncrossed fibers which are coming from the temporal retina and the cross nasal fibers which are coming from the nasal retina of the opposite side. So these two fibers basically form our optic tract. So whenever there is a lesion in the optic tract, it leads to what is called as contralateral hemianopia. Since the lesions of the optic tract is involving only half of our retina, that is the temporal half of one retina and the nasal half of the other retina, the testing for the Wernicke's pupil will also be involving only these particular half of the retina. Therefore, in order to test a hemianopic pupil, we actually need a focal beam of light for this hemi testing. We do not want a diffuse torch light which will go and stimulate the entire retina. We actually want a focal beam of light which will only stimulate the part of retina that we want to stimulate. And therefore, for that purpose, we usually use a slit, slit lamp focal beam and that beam can be reduced to a spot size and can be used to test the Wernicke's hemianomic pupil. So, let us see how do we test. Consider this to be actually us looking at the video. So this is our right eye and this is our left eye and this is our visual pathway which is uh, present in our brains and this is the magnified view of the same. Now using this focal beam of light, let us throw this beam of light so that it stimulates only the temporal half of the retina of the left eye. Similarly, let us throw the light in the right eye in such a way that it stimulates only the nasal part of the retina of the right eye. Now as we know that the nasal fibers are going to cross and the temporal fibers will actually not be crossing and passing into the left sided optic tract. So what happens in a hemianomic pupil is that whenever there is a lesion say in this left sided optic tract and we start testing in a way that I described there will be no pupillary reaction. Okay. However, if we throw the beam of light in such a way that the nasal part of the left retina and the temporal part of the right retina is stimulated, we will actually get a pupillary response. Why? Because the temporal part of the right retina will be carried uncrossed in the right optic tract and the nasal part of the left retina is getting crossed and going into the left into the right optic tract. Now, since our right optic tract is normal, this kind of testing will actually give us the pupillary reaction. Therefore, in Wernicke's hemianomic pupil, that is when the optic tract lesion is present, when light is thrown in the temporal half of the same side and nasal half of the other side, there will not be any pupillary reaction 
Why? Because we are throwing the light into the blind parts of the retina. Similarly, when the light is thrown in nasal half of the same eye and temporal half of the other side, we are throwing light into the eye, into the side of the eye which is actually normal. And therefore, we will see pupillary reflex. Okay? And this is called Wernicke's hemianomic pupil. That is when we throw light into the blind segments of the retina because of an optic tract lesion, we will not see any pupillary reaction. I hope that was useful. Thank you and have a nice day.